This is um, an interior um, assignment that I have. A few years ago, it would be tripods and lights and things like that, um, full full tilt, or at least on a tripod. But now, um, with the modern cameras, you can be shooting at um, at least um, 2,400 ISO, and uh, you know still be getting um, you know pretty good quality. So uh, I try and hand hold things as much as possible. Um, this situation in this room, there's a big huge window in front of me, so uh, chances are that I would be shooting um, um, some of the images as HDRs, uh, high definition resolution images, that um, are a combination of five different exposures, so that the same shot effectively, but shot five different, um, two different stops under, two different stops over, and the appropriate accurate setting, and then we bind those all together within software like Photomatix or, or there is a little application in Photoshop and uh, we get the best of those five images coming through. Other things that you, you would have to look for in a room like this is making sure that there's no clutter, making sure that um, your colour balance is, is right and that uh, your ambient light, your daylight and your um, tungsten or quartz halogen, in fact there's about three different light sources in this room, is, is balanced out. And I would definitely be shooting um, raw files in, the, in, in this sort of environment so that later on, if something doesn't go quite right on the shoot with the colour balance, I can balance that out in, in, in my raw converter later. It's also important that you know, your horizontals and verticals are, are looking cool. Now, the client has said to me that they do want the room to look a little bit bigger and they're quite keen for me to shoot a few fish eyes. But I actually know that coming back to um, you know, once we've, we've shot those fish eyes and looking at them in comparison with other shots that we've taken, that perhaps that might, be, might not be the look that they're, they're, they're going for. So what I do in this sort of situation is that I shoot a combination of, of straight shots and also a few fish eyes as well. I'm shooting on a diagonal across the room. I quite like that. I think it gives a, a really good feel. And because uh, you're looking to create the, um, the impression of space, uh, it's a good way to go. One of my colleagues, at contemporaries and, and um, mentors, Richard Paul, always said that if you didn't get down on your knees twice on a job, um, you weren't doing your job properly. So I'm just going to have a look at this just from down here. And yep, I just get on my knees and get a little bit further forward. And what you're looking for is a little bit of a balance. That's it. And I'm just going to click away here. And this will be my exposure that's absolutely bang on. Just having a little look. And it's beautiful atmosphere on the back of the camera. Um, it's nice and warm. So I'm just... Um, going to underexpose by one stop and underexpose by two stops and now I'm just going to go and do the other way overexpose by one stop and two stop and I'm just looking in here and it's looking pretty cool you know sometimes you should work with a tripod in this situation and other times from the client's perspective if you're trying to um, meet a budget in particular um, and you're really still and you've got a really good shutter speed and you've got enough depth of field as well. And my depth of field, um, you know, like I'm 5, 6, F8 and there's not a lot to, to, to lose sharpness through here. This little shot that I tend to take is a little bouncy shot. I'm using the flash on my camera behind me and I just bounce a little bit of light. Um, and that gives you a shot that is another alternative for the client. It cleans up the warmth and the ambience that, that is within the room that I actually like. But sometimes the client likes a crisper sort of look. And just by bouncing the, um, the flash um, off a back wall, which is the same color as the room, um, you tend to get a, a result that maybe they'll like later. So you, you're providing plenty of different options and, and remembering that you are shooting in RAW, not in JPEG. So yeah, even though these are going for a website, um, predominantly they could end up in brochures as well, so RAW is the way to go. The other thing that um, you might like to think about is how you set your colour balances on your camera. And a lot of people think that um, you know, auto white balance is the way to go, and sometimes it is. If you, you're not 100% sure, maybe that is the best way to go, but I quite like to balance things out for daylight. 
you know, sunlight. So that's what I've got my camera set on at the moment. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit warmer. It's not. It's definitely not a cold look, and uh, you know it usually comes up trumps in the end. So I'm just going to get down again, and we're going to shoot the room the other way. And yeah, we're a little bit darker this way. So yeah, here we go. And the other good thing about doing this is that you've got image stabilization with your camera. So you can actually hold the camera quite still, um, way down, probably even at a tenth of a second if you know what you're doing. And the other thing with that is that you can hold it at a tenth of a second because you're, you know, I shoot with a, a Sigma 18 to 250 mil zoom, and this is on the 18 mil length, so it's, it's on the, the, um, the widest that it can be and you, you should be able to keep that still at a fifteenth of a tenth of a second if you're just sort of bracing yourself. You keep your, your hands in real close to your shoulders and, and all, all going well, you can do this. So uh, one more straight shot, one shot at a thirtieth, one at a fifteenth, and then I'll come back and I'll shoot one at two fiftieth and six forty. It's almost dark on the back of the camera with the 640, but um, like 640th of a second, just thought you should know that, uh, and, and my depth of field is only f5, but I know that I can do things later on and make this, this image look really, really crash hot. Just don't forget to reset your camera back to the neutral position, because you could go and do something else later and um, you know, underexposed by two or three stops and then you're going to be in deep trouble. You are. But you pretty much build the experience and you, you have a little notebook in your head as to, to what you're doing. And if you don't have a notebook in your head, you should be writing things down for the future. That's a really good thing, you know, like, uh, or, or jotting it into your, your phone or your PDA. Um, with all this modern technology now, um, we can do these things really, really well and really, really quickly. And then you can repeat them for, for other things in the future. Um, this is the bathroom. It's a really, really tiny space. Um, we've got to make it look really, really good, although it does look good, but it's just tiny. I've just noticed that there's a towel rail over there and there's no towel on it, so you really should put a towel rail, uh, a towel on the towel rail, um, which I'm going to do to dress the scene to make it look a little bit more real. Um, there's also a rubbish bin in the corner. Um, I'm going to leave that there, but I'm going to crop it out. It's not, not relevant. So um, we'll pop a little bit of white, another little hand towel just down over here, and uh, just straighten it up a wee bit so that it's not distracting. Also in the mirror is the toilet. And you don't want to show it too much. It's not something, but you want it to be there. So it's almost subliminal. And there's the shot. And it's a bit cold. That is seriously cold. So we're going to change our white bal balance setting. It's like, that was like a dental clinic. You wouldn't want to spend time in that bathroom looking like that. So I'm just changing my colour balance to um, auto, auto white balance. And we're still too cold, we're, you know, like it's, it's not a pleasant, um, pleasant situation there. So I'm just going to warm things up a wee bit. We're going to try and bounce a little bit of light off my hand into the bathroom just to give it a little bit of warmth. And this is a really cool little trick and I use it in portraiture a fair bit. And we're just trying to keep our horizontals and verticals sort of in there. And we just got a little bit in the mirror there that we have to sort out. Just a fraction. If I come that way, whoop, I get myself in. And here we go. Beautiful. Don't you like a lovely white pristine bathroom? So we're, we're absolutely nearly there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just underexpose this just a little bit because I felt that you know, maybe we blew the light out just a wee bit and you don't want to be fixing things in, in Photoshop or, or some other image manipulation enhancement software. You, you don't want to spend time on it because that makes you unprofitable and uneconomic. So here we go. Hand up. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. Now that is much, much better by an f-stop, you can see the outline of the light. You just get the hint of the toilet. You don't want too much of that. 
the mirror in the corner gives the idea of space and it rebounds. Um, I think you even got a little hint of the, the shower in the corner there. The other thing that with this is that I think you know, we should give an option and so we, as with the room, so we're going to take a couple of shots, just a couple of final shots using our, our fisheye lens. So it's a really quick change, no um, wind or dust or anything like that around. Make sure you recap your lenses, there's nothing worse than getting um, dust on the back elements of your lens. Right exposure, under by one, under by two, over by one, over by two. So, you know, that's my HDR going through there and my little backstop with the flash bouncing off the back. I'm just checking to see where, where I am and I don't think I need to close down a stop here. Oof. So, you know, I can do that HDR bit and I can please the client and give the client an absolutely stunningly beautiful room. You know, you're shooting into a, a window that's got a lot of light coming through it and you've got lamps here as well that are firing out a lot of light but creating a lot of lovely warmth and ambience. You know, the, the base covering with shooting the HDR side of things is really, really important nowadays. You know, like it's just getting the, the um, making sure that your exposure and everything is, is going to be absolutely 100%. Again, I'm on a wider lens, um, but it's a smaller lens, so I, I can hand hold this down to a 30th of a second and I'm braced right in the corner. You know, like I'm, I'm not going to move and I, I, I'm, I'm focusing um, just on the end of the bed each time, the same place. I'd probably play around with my um, flash settings in here because we're dealing with a room that's quite, um, quite long um, and we've got people in the room so we're really looking to um, have them lit but not overly lit, just in a nice um, subtle sort of way and uh, yeah this room has fluorescence so um, that's quite interesting as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm not keen to have that um, bluey, greeny sort of fluorescent look coming through. So again, I have set my white balance um, to daylight, and I'm just supplementing with, with, a, with a little bit of flash. But the, the daylight um, and, and the light that's coming in here is the main light source. So um, yeah, it's important to realise that. But at least we've only got two two light sources in here. It's not overly mixed, so that that's pretty cool. Again, I'm working handheld. And um, yeah, we're just going for it. There's a lot of mirrors in here, so I'm just um, seeing if I can, can use those mirrors in some way, shape, or form in a sort of artistic sort of sense. Um, but generally, this is really good. And um, we're working on a um, to get a few little verticals here too. That would be good. And I'm just going to come around and get a little horizontal because you don't want everything to be the same format. So you know you've got your primary interest in the shot and then you've got the gentleman down there as your secondary interest and even though there's only two people in this gymnasium it actually looks busy it looks, and that's what you want it to do, you want it to look busy. In this little situation it's really important, you know we've got people involved, it's, it's important that you get your, your subjects on side and uh, which is what, what we've done, I, I always talk to people, ask them if it's alright that they have their photos taken, um, if they don't then you respect that. Um, if they do, well then you go with it and you make it as easy as possible for them and you give them a really good experience on the way through. So um, yeah, uh, it's not just an interior, it's actually partly environmental portraiture combined with, with interiors. So you know, you, you're, you're, my client um, is, is definitely wanting to have a situation as a working situation um, in, a, in an interior which is a gymnasium. And, and looking as good as possible with people working out. And if you don't have their cooperation, um, you're in deep trouble and it reflects in the photos. Sometimes you have to have eyes on the back of your head to see what's going on to make sure that you're making the most of a situation. And you know, like, um, as I said before, we're trying to make the gym look really, really um, busy. But we're actually not in a busy situation here and I'm having to get right down just to, to show things off to their best. Covering myself up again, just to show the extent of what is in the gymnasium, which is, you know, like, the, you know, it's, a, it's a lovely gym, and you want to show it. 
um, so that you're showing all the equipment off to you know the best and, and the nth degree. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. You have to be fit for this. <laughs> <laughs>